Yo, so today's question comes from one of our 20-year-old friends, young man, who's already beginning to lose his hair and it's tearing him up. He's very self-conscious about it. He wants to wear a hat all the time. And when a gust of wind goes by, he's afraid the hat's going to blow off. He feels like people are judging him. They're looking at him. It's really making him anxious. His self-esteem is taking a hit. He's getting depressed. Dude, and I can totally relate. I know where you're coming from. I think today I'm going to share a few stories about old Uncle E where I've lost the very things that I thought made me who I was. And I know you alluded to that in your, uh, your question. You said, all the things that made me beautiful. He said that he was very attached to his hair. Those things that made me beautiful, made me great, uh, allowed me to be me, the greatest me, uh, are going away now. Well, dude, this is a scourge and a blessing in disguise and I'll tell you why. So first let me just share my experience with you in terms of losing those very things that make you think you are those things or losing those things that you build your self-esteem up on. Uh, you know me, right? Yo Elliot, started making YouTube videos about strength training, bodybuilding, strength, uh, strong man. Uh, I love lifting, love building muscle, love growing strong. Since I was 14 years old, I had been building myself up, building my identity around lifting weights, self-esteem. Before I started lifting, my self-esteem, I couldn't say it was, it was shot, but I, I had nothing to lean on. I was a bad student. I wasn't a ladies man or anything like that. I didn't have any great talents except I was pretty athletic. When I started lifting weights, I realized that athleticism lent itself to building muscle. And I got it, I, I'm telling you, I literally built my entire character, my personality, my self esteem, everything I thought I was on muscle and weightlifting. Very identified with it. Well, uh, I not only built my self esteem up with building muscle, I also built a online persona, personality. Uh, I became YouTube famous, over a million subscribers, almost two million subscribers on my YouTube channel about strength training, strength camp. And uh, in 2015, I tore my bicep. I tore both biceps. I tore my left bicep in 2010, but it wasn't so bad. Uh, you can see it right now, it just looks like a normal arm. You couldn't tell that this is a, this is a torn bicep, right? I tore it, but it was, it was repaired. In 2015, I tore my right bicep and it's now deformed for life. Look at that. Look at that. Compare. Boom. Beautiful. And I had beautiful arms. Beautifully beautiful arms. Both of my arms. Beautiful arms. Lift, build them up. Nice, long muscle belly with a nice little peak. Totally destroyed it. I had it repaired and even though it's repaired, it's not what it used to be. And it hit me hard, man, because... Uh, I didn't want to wear uh, tank tops anymore. I didn't want to show, I just didn't want to show myself. I didn't show myself on YouTube for a very long time. I was ashamed, bro, I gotta tell you. It hit me hard so I, I can feel for you, I can empathize with you. Uh, I know what you're going through because the very thing that I thought I was, muscle man, beautiful body, was taken away from me. And uh, not only that, I'll go a little bit further. I'm gonna rub some salt in my own wound to just show you that you can get over it, right? It's not only something that you can get over, but it's gonna make you stronger in the end. Ultimately, this uh, breakdown of our ego and our identification with the material and our attachment to our looks is demonic. It's evil. It's horrid. It doesn't serve us, uh, but, but by overcoming these challenges, your soul grows, dude. Soul glow. Your soul will glow more because you're going to have to uh, find other things to build up. So just to go a little bit deeper with me, uh, I used to have beautiful hair. still have beautiful hair. I can grow my hair. I don't have hair loss. But I started getting, uh, I started getting a fungal infection in my, on my scalp about two years ago. And it was really, it was bad. I had all really bad uh, dandruff. And then like I couldn't get rid of it no matter what medications I was using. I fasted. Part of the reason why I fasted myself to the bone last year and went down to 175 pounds was because I was trying to heal myself from the fungal infection. It worked, it helped. I had to lose a lot of muscle as a result, but my scalp is better. 
But I started shaving my head as a result. I started shaving my head in order to uh, get some air to the, to the skin. Uh, as a byproduct of beginning to shave my head, I, I, I started growing my beard and I realized, hey, I kind of like not having the hair. And I kind of like growing my beard and I got a brand new look. So it kind of opened me up to another, another version of E, another way to look, another way to be. And so I got a brand new look and I like my look. You guys call me Ranger. I don't even know who Ranger is. I had to go look him up. I don't watch Netflix or whatever, wherever you get these programs. But uh, Ranger looks like a cool dude. And so, uh, you know, I let my beard grow. I trimmed it not too long ago. And I shaved my head. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, you can do the same thing if you want. But I want to just kind of wrap my whole experience in to, uh, around with some, like, philosophical ideas that you can kind of can help you. Uh, number one, uh, when you started talk, when you started sharing your story with me and I was reading your question, I began to think about how when one, one uh, thing goes, right, one thing goes away in your life, one uh, gift is taken away, that other gifts, other things, other fruits begin to blossom, other things begin to grow. So for example, I lost my, my bicep, but I got to discover a brand new part of myself that wasn't so personally identified with my muscle. I became a hippie. A lot of people, <laughs> I was a hippie for a couple of years, for about five years, from like 2015 to like 2018, I started shaking off the hippie shit. Uh, but I wanted to explore a different version of E, a different version of Elliot. And so I sensed that there was something else in me and I gave myself the opportunity to let go of the bicep and the pain associated with it and my whole torpness and delve into another aspect of myself, right? You open the gate to strengthening, exploring, strengthening, developing other parts of yourself. There's a really good movie, old kung fu movie called Cripple Avengers, the Cripple Avengers. And uh, in that movie, it's about five different guys and each one of them has a, a, a missing sense. There's one guy that's blind, there's a guy that's, that's, that's deaf, there's another guy who, I don't know, he's like mentally retarded or something. But the fact is that each one of them, when they lose one sense, they have hyper senses in the other. So the one guy who's blind, he can smell, like he smells the enemy coming, like he smells everything, or he can hear something really, you know, something far away. Uh, uh, the guy who couldn't hear, he had like hyper hypersensitive sight. This is not based on fiction. This is like true. When you lose one thing, the nervous system, the brain, your soul will grow in other ways to compensate. So if you, but that won't happen, my man, if you stay focused on the loss. So in order for other things to develop, other fruits to grow in your life, you got to learn how to be completely detached. So here's another thing that I want to share with you. This experience is an opportunity for you to grow in the virtue of detachment. Detachment is a virtue. Detachment literally means I don't care what happens to my body. I don't care what happens in the flesh. You know, like the, uh, like the Stoics very detached. Whatever happens, happens. Que sera, sera. Have you ever heard that? That's not an easy thing to develop, especially if you're personally identified with your circumstances, with what you've got, what you have, what you are. Uh, it's, it's a virtue that is developed through the process of mortification. Beautiful word. I love that word, mortification. To die to oneself, to die to aspects to your, of yourself. So right now, you get an op opportunity to practice mortification, being okay with the death of a previous version of yourself. Me with hair, right? You with hair. Uh, let yourself die to that. Detach from any emotional content that's associated with it. That's super important. Detach because you're thinking other people are thinking about you, but they're not thinking about you. You're thinking about them thinking about you. Most people don't give a shit about you. Most people ain't thinking about you. And most people's opinions about you are very fleeting, right? You can't. And so one of the things that happened to me as a result of this mortification process, tearing my bicep, turning ugly, is uh, I'm so much more, more detached from what people think of me. I, believe it or not, I had a hard time for a while uh, when I was getting attacked on YouTube. Some guys just didn't like me. I'm eccentric. And, uh, and it started to hurt my feelings. Uh, it's good. It was good in so many different ways. It allowed me to go go down into the dungeon, into the dirt, humble myself, be mortified, but then rise up 
And the new Elliot is so fucking based. <laughs> like, I don't care. In fact, I want people to hate me. Hate me, please! Right? Because it means that I'm saying something. It means that I'm um, triggering you. I'm rubbing some salt in the wounds. You don't know the wounds are there unless somebody rubs some salt in it. So, uh, like, I kind of hanker. I kind of look for haters at this point, right? So, I don't, I don't... Where I used to censor myself because I was afraid of being disliked. I became so disliked that I like being disliked. And so I want you to get to that place. Not necessarily where you, you go around trying to trigger people, but to the place where you are so f comfortable with yourself. You're so fully mortified and detached that you can live that based lifestyle, right? I love that word based. I learned that from you guys. I had to go look it up in Urban Dictionary. Based literally means, or Urban Dictionary means, that you are so firmly fixed on your base that you can't be knocked off. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. You might knock me around, but I ain't falling down. You see what I'm saying? That's being based. Having a, think about being grounded, having a solid base. You're going to grow a more solid base because of this. Because here's another, just another concept. Uh, it wasn't until the quote-unquote sexual revolution that uh, women started really judging men based on their looks. Before that, it was more, more matter of, you know, uh, a man's ability to provide, a uh, man's ability to be a strong man, be a virtuous man. Um, looks were kind of secondary, and that's why, and you know it's still kind of true, uh, because you can see, like, ugly dudes who are super successful women just trip over them, right? Because it's power women are attracted to. Truly, they're attract, attracted to power. Not so much attracted to looks as much as the media has taught them to be attracted to looks. That's kind of, you know, a part of the brainwashing that's happened in the feminization of our culture. Women are looking for hot guys when really they want powerful men. And some of the most powerful men are ugly, ugly, ugly men. Her, right? And so you can develop your power because power comes from within. Force comes from outside. Even putting on makeup or doing your hair or trying to look a certain way, it's being forceful. It's almost a little violent in a way. It's like you're trying to manipulate somebody. But when you're powerful, it just oozes out of you. And nobody can, uh, and nobody can take that away from you. So, dude, I just wanted to share those things from you. Oh, okay, one last thing. I wrote a little bit of a list here for you. Uh, so this whole process of mortification and detachment they lend to your capacity for ascension, right, everybody? You know, they say we're going through this awakening process here on the planet. I don't know how true all that is. People are becoming enlightened. Well, I like to think of enlightened as a literal term where you're literally becoming more and more detached from the heaviness of our experience, our fallen nature, our, our, our fleshy nature. And so as you detach from the dust, our body, your body, you're going to die. All this dust. From dust, we'll go back to dust. The more and more you can be detached from your body, the more and more you can be detached from the material circumstances of your life, the more and more you'll ascend into spirit, meaning that you are moving towards, atoning with that which is intangible, that which is of the pattern, that which is divine, that which is higher, but not so present because it's not sensual, it's not physical, the more you attain your true, to your true nature. Our true nature isn't our body. This is not Elliot Hulse nature. My energy is Elliot Hulse nature. My soul is Elliot Hulse nature. And the purest form of my Elliot Hulse nature is total dissolution, dissolving into spirit, into pattern, into God, the Father, right? So the more you can detach from your physical experience, circumstances, body, looks, um, 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 possessions, the more holy you become. And when I say holy, I literally mean whole. You become more whole. Because in the 3D experience, we are, just like what 3D does, it creates separation. 3D, we live, in, we live in and we're attached to the separation consciousness. But when you ascend, when you rise up, when you become spiritual, when you rise up out of the 3D, you become much uh, much less fear-based, physical-based, material-based, sensation-based, and much more free. Free-based. Be based and free. Done.